Hello, and welcome to Brian's Computer Retreat. In this episode, my first entry into Marchintosh, I'll show you how to safely disassemble and reassemble the Apple Pippin so you can do preventative maintenance or modifications on your system. First, plug the Pippin into power and eject the CD-ROM tray. The Pippin takes a few seconds after boot to allow the disk tray to be ejected, so be patient. Once the tray is ejected, unplug the machine so that it doesn't close itself. Flip the pippin over and gently pull the front edge of the CD bezel away from the CD tray. You may want to use a guitar pick in the seam to make this easier, though it can be done without if you're gentle. While these plastics aren't as delicate as other Macs from the era, it is best to be very gentle when working with plastics of this age. Once the plastic catches are released, the bezel should slide down and off the front of the CD tray easily. This exposes a screw, which we will remove later. Next, remove the eight Torx screws on the bottom of the system. I recommend setting the screws down in the same order you took them out in, so you get them into the same spots when reassembling. The outer screws go into the plastic top of the case, while the inner screws go into the metal chassis of the machine. Once these screws are removed, hold the pippin on its back and remove the single screw which was hidden beneath the CD-ROM bezel. This is your last Torx screw. With all of the outer screws removed, lay the pippin upside down once more and gently pull the front bezel of the machine forward while lifting the bottom case piece from the back of the machine. This will disengage the plastic clips holding it in the front of the case very gently. Next, lay the machine on its bottom with the front facing away from you. Gently lift the top case from your left and swing it up towards your right. There is a ribbon cable connecting it on your right. This cable is easiest to remove after you remove the front bezel. Going around the front of the case, there are four plastic clips holding the front bezel onto the main chassis of the machine. With a guitar pick, spudger, or your fingernail, gently release these clips and pull the front bezel away from the main chassis. Once the four clips are disengaged, the bezel should slide off the front of the machine. Now, lower the top cover back onto the pippin and lift it on its side, such that the ribbon cable is facing you. There is a small hole in the metal shielding through which you can access the ZIF connector. Using a spudger or tweezers, release the ZIF connector by pulling the retaining clip towards the side of the machine. Once the retaining clip is released, the ribbon cable is free to be removed from the connector and the top case can be set aside. The main chassis is held together by four Phillips screws on the top and two on the front. Remove these screws and set them aside. Now, place the pippin on its bottom and hold one of the screw tabs on the base to keep the bottom half steady. Then, at the cutout for the CD-ROM tray, pull gently on the top half of the chassis. This is friction fit as well as held in by screws, so it takes some force to pull it open. Don't pull too far, as the CD-ROM drive is attached to the top of the chassis and connected to the logic board with several cables. Once free, hinge the top half of the chassis towards the back and remove the CD audio cable from the logic board first. This is clipped to the top case and it may be easier to disengage the clip first to give you more room to maneuver the cable. Next, remove the CD-ROM's power cable from the logic board and finally remove the SCSI connector from the logic board. Set aside the top case. At this point, you have access to remove the battery. This is the same type of battery that destroys all manner of vintage Macs, so get this out ASAP if you have a Pippin. 
Once that's taken care of, you can choose to make some mods, such as adding a connector for a SCSI hard drive. Thanks to recent advancements, you can now boot a pipin from an unsigned hard drive, no matter which ROM revision you have, and I'll discuss my testing with this in a later episode. To reassemble your pipin, follow the same steps in reverse. I recommend that you test the buttons on the top of the machine before installing the screws in the plastic, as ZIF cables can be frustrating to get installed properly. Once you're done, test out your Pippin and pat yourself on the back for doing your part to preserve this uncommon piece of Apple history. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked this one, please get subscribed. I'm still working on some more videos about the Pippin and ways to make it more useful today. Also, keep an eye out for more Marchintosh content from other vintage creators on all sorts of social media platforms. See y'all next time.